Hi, everybody. Um, my name is Spila. I'm coming from Geological Survey of Slovenia. Um, and today's presentation will be about one project, specific project, Pan Af Geo project, which means Pan African Geological Projects, because this is um, covering the field of geology and the story behind how we included open source software in our teaching um, part of the project itself. So you will, I will first give you the overview of how project works and then how we included uh, open source softwares for our trainings. So everything began really years ago because um, mineral resources as such were um, are really important, as you know, also from commercial uses. And, but Africa is still lacking the systematic mapping of these mineral resources. So there was an opportunity um, to, to change this. And there was a feasibility study made in 2015 about what, are, what is the status of the art and what are the skills of African geological service to, to to be better or, or to, make, to improve in, this, in the field of mineral resources. So for that reason, European Union uh, financed uh, a project between European Geological Service, which is an organization within Europe uh, that connects 30 different geological services uh, and they are presenting one part of the project and the, the other one is organization of African Geological Service and we are establishing a long-term strategic cooperation so to transfer our knowledge and know-how to, to them so that they can improve and reinforce their own skills and also this is um, uh, you have some um, key networks and partners involved so these were the main, are still the main objectives because the project finishes in this year. Um, so the regional mapping, mineral resource mapping and exploration, upgrading geoscientific information base, upgrading mineral inventories, uh, these are the key points that we want to improve. This is the European Consortium, as you can see uh, 12 geological services are included in this consortium with a lead partner from France. And the project consists of eight work packages dealing with different uh, ge geoscientific skills. As you can see, there is ge geoscientific mapping, uh, mineral resource assessment, artesian small-scale mining, but also environmental management of mines, um, geohazard, geosites, um, as well as geoinformation management. And it is set in a way that you have a, a European leader of the work package and also we have a co-leader cool on the African side so that the impact could be or is it is uh, higher and the idea is to pr was and, and it's now it's it's on ongoing that we have around 40 trainings planned in English French and Portuguese and that the whole Africa is covered so these are the locations where uh, it was provisional maps where the training should be taking, uh, uh, should be hosted in which countries. So 500 days of training, 11,000 days of trainees presence. So all together 42 trainings uh, through the three years uh, project duration. So at the end of 2018, the, the, the status was like this almost 700 trainees coming from 44 countries and 14 hosting countries so nine english speaking sessions and nine french speaking sessions and the portuguese uh, two will be in t well one was already done in this year and one uh, will be in in a month or so so as you can see um, this is really covering the whole africa so this is also one of the key um, success part of the project itself because it's rarely, uh, the projects rarely focuses on the whole continent. They are set to the north or, or south or just depends. Um, so this, in the work package seven, geoscientific information management, this is where open source uh, comes to, uh, I would not say it's too lie, but it, it's the part where we can use it. 
especially in two models. One is about database management, the second one is about spatial data infrastructure. So the trainings are set upon our knowledge at um, in, in the case of the spatial data infrastructure knowledge that we gain at Geological Survey of Slovenia. Because we ran into, um, I think, a, a general problem that uh, ESRI became quite expensive and we could not afford uh, so many licenses anymore. Uh, so we were looking for new um, ideas and we turned to open source. So we, st we, we used our data and we prepared them in a way to combine different open source uh, software. And this is how we planned our training uh, for, for Africans. And Geological Survey uh, performed two trainings, one in Tanzania and one in Botswana. So to, to make first geology more recognizable, to make uh, their data more interoperable, or at least to make them free, or, or, or in a way uh, to give them a chance to collect them on a national level, because they are still um, hiding their data, uh, not just on the in, on the institutional level, but also on personal level. So they really need, maybe now we'll, they will have a chance because the, the, uh, the, the easy approach is uh, you have a, a, a quick result at the end. So you can show quite quickly what you have. So maybe this will uh, push them a little bit. Um, so we, we planned our training in a way that we perform practical exercises on computer. So in a way they also gained some new skills because most of them they knew, some they knew QG, QGIS, but uh, GeoCattle and GeoServer they didn't know. Um, and also they wanted to do it themselves. Um, so this was the kind of uh, overview of our training process. There are QGIS is missing uh, at the beginning down, down below that we started first to, to look at our their spatial data and then we created a database and then we also used Postgre, um, PostGIS, PostGIS important to, to put these um, GIS flat files into database and then through, through GeoCattle we also combined some data and uh, we used at the end Geo uh, Server and Geo Network to publish them for the first time some data on the, ma on, on, on the internet. Um, so they got the idea of the whole process. For them it was too quickly, it was like a 14 day uh, training but too many information at, a, at a too much time uh, because they're still dealing with the basics. But nevertheless, we ask at the end, the, how did they find certain category of the training important? And the highest number would be five and they, they see usability of open source software as something that is really important for them. Um, I also, uh, afterwards, uh, I sent some questionnaire around, just a simple one. Do they use actually now after we finish the trainings, uh, these softwares and for what purposes? I got only 10 responses back, so there is no huge analysis analyze behind, but still we can get an, an, uh, uh, a slight impact how successful can we be. Uh, so the QGIS is uh, uh, most popular. But also they use PostgreSQL for data management and some uh, are also using GeoServer and GeoNetwork. But this is also connected to how advanced they are and what are their, their possibilities by home. Uh, these are maybe more, more exact question, uh, answers. F so Q QGs, they, they, they produce it different thematic maps. Uh, this is the example of mineral property map for mineral exploration companies in Liberia. Uh, also, they are visualizing satellite images and they use it for training, not just for them, but also for, uh, to train other colleagues. GeoCattle is more or less used for converting all data or organized all data uh, into uh, a new databases that are uh, developed in PostgreSQL, like in, uh, uh, in, this is from Nigeria and in Kenya or, or also li Liberia, but uh, I like that they say that for them, it, they need more practice because it's difficult. But 
it's it's nice to rec to be recognized that they recognize that they need it, but they still need some some work to mm, to improve. And GeoSurveys for sharing geological data and GeoNetwork for metadata and cataloging different type of data in their server survey. So my conclusions are that even though they are they have unequal possibilities because of the politics, because of the financial issues, because of the um, human resources. Usually there are one-man band uh, who should, uh, with a geological background even, so it's hard for them. Um, and also it's hard for us to follow feedback. We cannot count how, much, how many times did they open QGIS. We cannot count uh, the, la the layers that they produced. So we are now really thinking about how to evaluate our impact. That uh, maybe it's after three years, it's too early to expect a huge impact. But as a, as if we go ahead and they w there is a possibility that the project will continue it in the second phase, we should find some solution to, to measure this impact because then we can also uh, help a little bit more or, or be more on user side, user needs side. Um, the good thing is they are setting up a strong network among each other within the countries and uh, within the country itself and outside the borders. Um, and I think we are going to succeed in a way to reinforce skills of employees in African Geological Service. And also one more thing that this is, these are public services and it's a different story towards private sector because private sector is strong. They know all these open source software, they use it and they are really good at it. So the people who learn at uh, public services usually go to work than for private. Um, and the generations are changing and the people uh, who were actually participants, they were average year, well, for the first training it was 44 years, the average, uh, and for the second it was 35. So actually for European standards it's quite late, but um, it, it, it shows that they are thinking about changes and they need to do them also by themselves, not just wait for outsider to set them the system and they, they be just the users. So thank you. It's, uh, uh, it's about Pan of Geo. From my side, if you want uh, more, there is a, um, a website. You can have more detail, uh, more information on the project itself there. But if you have any questions. Because as I know, probably the loss of mine fields are owned by European countries, maybe from Swiss. Some Swiss, yeah, not not just Swiss. Um, yeah, it's for for public sector because it's a, a, a transfer and know-how from public sector in Europe to public sector to to Africa. But. Uh, there is a strong politics here behind, especially because of mineral res resources, and the directors of uh, geological service have strong um, political, how do you say, back not, not background, but they need to know strong politicians around to, to be able to perform some services. So uh, it's not a white, black picture behind it. But it's not our problem to solve it, we just yeah, perform technical issues here. 